Welcome to Your Florida Lawn, the environmentally friendly way to grow and sustain a Florida-friendly landscape. Your host is Dr. Lori Trenholm, residential turf grass specialist with the University of Florida's Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences. Join Lori and her special guests as they offer tips and solutions to maintaining a Florida-friendly lawn. Have you ever wondered what an irrigation controller really does? How does it make your irrigation system come on? What are all these buttons and knobs and dials here? And how can you adjust any of these to get the maximum irrigation efficiency for your lawn? Sometimes these contraptions can be pretty confusing. And actually, when homeowners don't understand how to best utilize their irrigation controller, they're not going to get maximum irrigation efficiency. Here to help explain some of what this controller actually does today is Dr. Michael Dukes. Michael is an associate professor in the Agricultural and Biological Engineering Department at the University of Florida, and his specialization is working on these irrigation controllers and research related to them. So Michael, start by showing us, if you would, what is an irrigation zone? An irrigation zone, uh, also called an irrigation or station on this controller, is essentially a way to break up the irrigation system into pieces that can be watered with the water supply fed to the house. There's not enough water to water the entire lawn all at once, so you have these zones. And the zones are operated by solenoid valves, which are connected to the controller. Now, how many zones would a lawn like, like this one have? This lawn here has four zones. Okay. Many typical lawns have four to six zones. All right, and one zone gets irrigated at a time, correctly? That's correct. Okay. One right after the other. So, Michael, how would one change the frequency or the number of days with which they irrigate? The frequency, you can see this controller here is pointed to off, and it particularly tells you how it's operating because it the last number blinks when it's off. Mm -hmm. When you turn it to an irrigation schedule, the time stays fixed. You can look at this one and on Monday it says off, so it's not going to run on Monday. On Tuesday it says on. And then on Wednesday, off. Thursday, off. Friday, on. Saturday and Sunday are also off. So this one's set for two days a week on a custom schedule. Now how, do, how would you change this? Say if you wanted to go from two days a week to one day a week, perhaps during the winter months, how would you turn one of those days off? On this controller it's pretty simple. They all vary a little bit. But you can see here it says on and off, so you just hit off, and now Friday's off. That sounds pretty simple. So folks could very easily adjust the number of irrigations that their lawn is getting throughout the week. Correct. Very easily. Now one final thing that we need to talk about with this is how long should our irrigation uh, system actually run and how does one adjust that? That's a good question too. That depends on your uh, particular area. Uh, generally we recommend a half to three quarters of an inch. Of course on here it doesn't say half or three quarters of an inch. But you can see this one here is set for 60 minutes. Uh, and it depends on the equipment. Uh, rotary sprinklers are typically 45 to 60 minutes per cycle and that's a half to three quarters of an inch typically. Mm -hmm. um, spray heads are a little bit less or sometimes a lot less depending on how they're spaced. So you can see here zone one is set for 60 minutes run time. Zone two is 60 minutes run time, and those are both rotary uh, sprinklers. Zone three is 60 minutes, and then zone four is 30 minutes, and that's a set of spray heads. Spray heads, so you, you should know how long it takes you to put out the half to three quarters of an inch that's of water. Correct. And we cover that in another video segment called how to calibrate your sprinkler system. But I think, you know, this, this makes it pretty easy for a homeowner to actually be able to open this up and figure out how to apply the correct amount of water. And of course, some of the other things they want to look for are irrigation efficiency. They should watch their system run periodically, make sure they don't have broken spray heads. What other recommendations would you have? Well, another thing to program that's uh, very important is the irrigation start time. And you can see this controller has one, two, three, start, three potential start times. Uh, and this one is set to start at 6 a.m. So the f zone one will come on at 6 a.m., run for 60 minutes. Zone two will then come on after zone one, run for 60 minutes, so on and so forth. Um, you could have multiple start times if that were necessary, if there was a runoff issue or a slope. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, the typical settings for date and time, 
And that's really about it. There is a percentage adjustment so that um, if you wanted to adjust percentage, if an area was shady and needed a little bit less water than some of the other areas, you could do that. That's a great feature because we do need to irrigate those areas less than the ones that are in full sun. Right. All right. What other words of advice should we give folks? What about uh, use of a, a rain shutoff sensor? That's a good point. Um, by Florida statute, uh, most irrigation systems are required to have a rain shutoff device or a rain sensor. Uh, and that's wired into this controller. Different controllers vary slightly, um, but essentially it deactivates the signal between the controller and the valve mm -hmm. when the rain shutoff is wet or after rainfall. Um, and then when it dries out, the controller works on its normal schedule as we saw programmed here. And uh, also, be, uh, homeowners should be mindful of the uh, water restrictions if it's two days a week, one, days, one day a week, or three days a week. Or right, have to follow those regulations. Yeah. Right. And of course, you know, one of the best things that a homeowner can do is look at your lawn. If it's showing signs of wilt, then perhaps you need to adjust your irrigation controller if regulations allow for that. But quite often, homeowners overwater or apply irrigation too frequently or for right. too long a period of time. So keep an eye on your lawn and let it tell you if it's, it's going uh, thirsty or if it's doing real well with the water it's getting. Good point. Michael, one last question. What would be an example of when a person would want to turn this controller to off? A good time to do that would be when it's rainy, for example, maybe in the summer or in the winter time when the turf is dormant. You would just simply turn it off. Excellent. Well, Dr. Dukes, thank you so much for sharing your expertise here with us this morning. We really appreciate this, and this is very valuable information. From the University of Florida IFAS Extension Service and Florida Friendly Landscaping, I'm Dr. Lori Trenholm for your Florida Lawn. Thank you for joining us for this segment of Your Florida Lawn. For more information on how to maintain your Florida-friendly landscape, please visit our website or contact your local University of Florida County Extension Office.